everybody. My name is Chrissy. And I'm Christina, and we're from the Chattanooga Public Library. And today, we would like to welcome you to the very first quarantine, Crafting with Craft Beers, which we will be making plant markers and turning some of our trash into treasures. So I'm going to be leading the program, and Christina is going to be doing it alongside me. And we also want to give a shout out to our partner, Barley Chattanooga. Wish we were there. Uh, but they are open from 2 to 8 every day for pickup. If you want beer, wine, and cocktails, give them a call. Awesome. So I'm going to go over the supplies, make sure to gather yours all up, and then come back and do our craft. Yay! All right, guys. So here are some of the supplies that you might need. And these are just our suggestions of plant markers. So I have five different things. That we're gonna you can choose from we've got either our spoon plant markers which i have an excess of spoons in my house for some reason so during spring cleaning i decided to take those aside to use here we are going to try to do some embossed with um, aluminum foil we've got these awesome can toppers because i know we've all stocked up on cans of food right now then we also have our wine cork option and then and our last one are just sticks that i gathered from my yard and I whittled these down and sanded them to have a flat edge. So these are just five options that we are going to be showing today. And some of the other supplies that I have, you don't, these are just suggestions. Once again, I have a lot of paint around my house. So I was going to try to paint some of mine. I've got paint pens, but I also just have Sharpies. And then for the embossing, I do have embossing tools, but you don't have to have those. I think Christine is going to be using a paper fold for hers but basically if you just you just need something that's sharp enough to emboss the tin foil but not sharp enough that it's going to cut through it so Christina also has chopsticks so that's an awesome option but our very first step in this process is for you to go outside or maybe your plants are inside since it's been cold and make a list of all of your plants you want to make sure that they're spelled correctly and I personally did a little bit of research about what the plants looked like because I wanted to do little drawings on my plant markers. So I have my list here of all my plants beside my, my working station. All right, so go gather your supplies and come back. So the first one that we're gonna show you how to do is gonna be our wine cork garden markers. So I have some corks from a long time ago. I've got a couple of built more, you know, whatever you have around your house. Christina, what, what do you have? Oh, I have, a few corks. Um, uh, these in particular are my new favorite wines. I've been getting curbside pickup from Imbibe. So yeah. There you go. Tricks of the trade. Perfect. So what we want to do is we want to make our corks flat on one side so that we can write our plant down on them. So we're going to use um, a pen. I have a ruler out just because I'm a crazy perfectionist, and then an exacto and or a knife. Make sure to be very careful. This is why we're doing this one first during crafting with craft beers. <laughs> so you're going to take on either side of your cork and draw a line. I'm going to do it about a fourth of the way, just as a guide. Oh, right there. Okay, and whenever you have those marked out for your guide, um, you can go ahead and connect them on the side of your cork. Once again, just a guide. And now is the time to start cutting these flat. So I have an X-Acto knife, Christina has an X-Acto knife. What I would recommend doing um, is like lightly scoring it before trying to just cut all the way through. People make mistakes with X-Acto knives a lot of the time and think that you're just supposed to press down super hard to get one full cut. Um, but it really works better if you do multiple lighter cuts. It's a lot more safe and a lot more precise. So go ahead and using your X-Acto knife or knife, let's go ahead and cut our corks down.
And please make sure to keep your fingers out of the way. <laughs> You look like the serial killer right now. <laughs> Please include some of this in there. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, I went ahead and gave one of my corks a base layer of white paint. If you don't have white paint, totally fine. Or, or if that's against your aesthetic, also totally fine. Um, the other one I'm gonna leave blank just so that I can use a Sharpie or some paint pens to go ahead and write in my plant that I want for that one. So you can also get a little sassy and decorate the outside of these as well. Kind of reminds me of our last crafting with craft beers that we did decorating forks for succulents. So that is our first one prepped and ready to go. Okay, so on to the next. Okay. For our next one, we are going to be upcycling spoons as garden markers. So this is when if you have paint around the house, you can get extremely crafty with it. But if not, paint pens obviously work or just Sharpies. I think that Christina is using a different kind of spoon than I am. Will you show off your spoon? Perfect. <laughs> so she's going to be using a wooden spoon. And so any type of like felt tip marker or Sharpie would work perfectly for that. So for these, you can either start directly onto your silver or metal, <laughs> um, hoping they're not actual silver, um, or you can go ahead and do a base layer. I decided to do this soup spoon gave it a nice base layer of paint. So I'm going to let that one dry so that I can go ahead and kind of put my cartoon, I think I want to do basil on that one, but I can go ahead and start using my paint pens or my Sharpies to start to decorate my other ones. So let's go ahead and take a few minutes to work on those. All right. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> the thing you always want to hear. Oh boy. <laughs> well. So with the spoons, you can either put your title of your plant or herb, I guess, either on the actual spoon part or on the handle. I'm trying to decide which one for this. Where are you going to be putting yours? Um, I was thinking about going um, up here and then down here, but I, I suppose this is a flatter surface, so it could work either way. That looks so good. I'm really jealous of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh. There's a couple of examples of the spoon. I still have to let my ones that I painted dry for a little bit, but while I let those dry, we can move on to the instructions for the next one. All right, so for our next one, we're going to be using some aluminum foil to create embossed markers. So I have a glue stick, but you can also just fold it on top of itself if you don't have a glue stick. I also have a Sharpie and my embossing tools. Like I said before, you don't have to have those. I think Christina also has a chopstick uh, that would, I'm excited to see how that one works. And also she has paper folders to try those out. So let's go ahead and take some of our uh, aluminum foil out of the case. It's a little loud, so I might hit mute during this part. And it's also up to you, depending if you want it more on the dull side or more on the shiny side. 
I prefer the shiny side, <laughs> but you know, you can decide uh, with your liking. And you also need to decide how big you want your marker tag. Um, I think that I'm gonna kind of do mine in uh, long skinny rectangles. So I'm gonna start folding mine uh, my, on top of each other and using glue stick, using a glue stick to glue it down while I fold it. So let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and use my ruler to mark out how big I want mine. So I ended up just using the actual like width of my ruler as my guide. And I did three lines so that I can fold these two sides in on the middle and glue it together so it'll be thick. How many lines are you drawing out? I did three. Um, so I'm gonna fold this side, like the two ends to the middle, just to make it thicker. Okay. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on either side. And when I drew out my lines, that created uh, a bit of a divot in there. So it should be easy to fold up on top of itself. So now is going to be the time in which that list that you have correctly spelled out all of your herbs and plants really comes in handy because whenever we emboss on here, we want it to be sticking up, right? So whenever we put pressure on our tin foil, when we turn it over, it's going to be up. So with that being said, it's going to be backwards. <laughs> so you need to go ahead ahead and pick out whichever herb or plant you want to do and write out the letters backwards. So does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. So whenever you have it written out backwards, you can go ahead and take whatever you're using as your embossing tool, which I'm pretty sure that my Sharpie already started to do the trick, you can see. Um, but you want to go ahead and just use something a little bit sharper, a little bit more pointy, and put some more pressure down. And I'm feeling a little sassy, and I might add some like dots or something around mine, Ooh. just to give it a little bit of a border. Not necessary, obviously. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, I like the circles. Very cute. So what I'm gonna do with mine um, is I'm gonna take these like uh, bamboo skewers that I have and you can use whatever you have on deck at your own house you can use wire you could use popsicle sticks whatever chopsticks ingenuity christine i love it um and i'm just going to go ahead and put like figure out where i want it to be on my tag and i'm going to take my glue stick and i'm going to go ahead and start laying down glue on this side of it as well as where the ske skewer is going to go and then fold it over so that the back of our tag isn't just our like Sharpie oh. area. Very nice. Then if you're feeling super sassy, you could, I might do that, like cut a little jagged edge here so it looks really like a, uh, a flat tag always feeling sassy always and 
then mine was just a little bit longer than I wanted it to, so I went ahead and twirled it around the skewer. Oh my goodness. This is adorable. Hello, best. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Oh my Super goodness. Super cute. Okay, I'm, that one's been my favorite so far, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Awesome. Okay, so um, yay. I hope that all of y'all have enjoyed this one just as much as Christina and I have. On to our next. <laughs> all right, so our next garden marker will just involve running outside and seeing if you can find any broken limbs in your yard. So I found these two in my yard about two hours ago and just took a knife, or I found my exacto worked really well, and very carefully whittled down part of the stick and then just took a little bit of sandpaper and sanded it down so that this is nice and flat and all you'll do is take a paint pen or a sharpie and go ahead and write out a herb or a plant. Hmm. So go ahead. If you didn't want to go out into your yard, you could, and you didn't want to have to whittle things down, you could also use popsicle sticks for this since it's just writing vertically. Um, I think that it'll look kind of cool being in my garden, being a part of nature. So we shall see. Well, one letter bled a little in the wood, but stop it. We both yeah. did. We both did oregano. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Not even planned. Guess the only thing with this one is that if you mess up, there's not really a way to go back. <laughs> but I'm sure that you could just go right back outside and find another piece of wood. Awesome. So and here is more authentic. Yeah. Yes. So here's another example of some garden markers. Awesome. So for our last one that we're going to be showing you, we are going to be upcycling jar lids or pan lids. So I've got one of each. Um, I've got an old mason jar lid, but then I also have this from a black bean can that I made black beans last night. I know that a lot of us went and stocked up on our can good. So this is a great way to repurpose those. So what we're going to show you how to do before decorating is just putting a hole through your can lid for it to hang in your garden. So all you're going to need is a nail and a hammer. And then I got a piece of fabric just to kind of muffle the sound and not break my glass table. So I'm just going to put my nail down, tap it a couple of times, Oop, and I just felt it go through. And so now you have a hole, but I'm gonna go back and forth a couple of times just to make sure that the hole in it is big enough to get a piece of wire through. Okay, so after that's done, then you get to go ahead and take your Sharpies, your paints, your paint pens, and start decorating. How did yours turn out? Um, so I actually have a, a couple different types of oregano. So I did a, me, there you go, Mexican oregano. Ooh, oh, I like that. Very good. I decided to go with chamomile for mine. Where's the camera? There we go. And did a little oh, bit of chamomile so flat. Pretty. So there we go. Very fun. Um, okay, so. I'm gonna finish up doing this one and put some finishing touches on my other ones, so then we'll come back and show off everything all together. Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. So Christina and I are both done with all of ours, and so we wanted to do a quick shot showing them all off. So our first one, I did cucumber, 
for my, my fork. I couldn't put cucumber, so I put cute. Oh, very cute. Awesome. Get a little oregano. Mm -hmm. And then we have our spoons, which I did basil for mine. Beautiful. And I did Thai basil. Okay, and then our embossing time, which looks backwards to you, but. Basil. And then our sticks. I just did the one, but oregano. Beautiful. And then our last one, which I went ahead and put a wire through mine so that I can hang it up. But I did this for my chamomile. I attached a stick to mine so I could plant it in the planter that my Mexican oregano is in. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much. Christina, which one was your favorite? I think the embossing was my favorite. Just because it was super exciting to turn it around and see that it actually looked so cool. Um, and also the spoon was fun. I want to, next time I want to try painting a spoon. But I think um, one thing I learned was that I definitely would let, you know, should spend a little time smoothing down the surface of my cork because some of mine were really rough and it was probably on me for how I cut it. But, you know, anyway, I, I liked all of them. They were all fun to do. Perfect. I'm so glad that you got to do these with me. And I'm going to go put them outside in my garden and take pictures that um, I'm going to show at, this at the end of this video. And Christina, I think you're going to do the same, right? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So I hope everyone at home, if you do any of those or any of these, that you take a picture and tag us on Instagram or Facebook. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye. All right, so for our last one that we're gonna show y'all today, we are going to be repurposing cam lids, or lids from cams. What did you, jar lids? Um, what did they do? Jar lids, like that. Okay. They come in pairs. They do come in pairs. <laughs> <laughs> they come in pairs. 